Let me ask you, would you let somebody come to your house, look through all of your contacts, all of your text messages, your call logs? I didn't think so. So why are you letting companies do that now? I'm going to show you how you can protect your privacy and I'm going to show you what shady companies do. Let's get started. The first thing you need to do is download LBE Privacy Guard from the Google Play Store. You will need root access to be able to use this app. When you open up the program, you will see a menu, Internet Firewall, Permissions Manager, and Settings. Let's jump right into Permissions Manager section first. If you look at the very bottom, we are under the Permissions tab. You will also see Apps, Event Log, and Settings. I will talk about those later. Let's go over the permissions area first. The first area is SMS. If you see, there are four apps that want access to my text message inbox. Let's take a look and see what those apps are. If you look closely, LBE is monitoring these four apps. The orange alert icon on the right means that whenever any of these apps try and read my text message, it will alert me. Uh, alert messages can be annoying, but it's also a good way to know when these apps are trying to access your personal data. If I click on the app, I can change the settings to allow the app to access my SMS without notifying me, or I can also just have it deny it every time. Now if I scroll down more, you will see a section called Trusted Apps. These are generally built-in apps that came with your phone. You can also change permissions and settings, but for the most part, I wouldn't be too worried. After all, when you do get an Android phone or an iPhone, you're basically giving Google or Apple all of your info, so take your pick. Let's go back to the previous menu and see the next section, which is Contacts. 15 apps want access to my contact list. Let's see what those apps are. Looking at this list, I can already tell you it's not looking good. Why does Swipe want access to my contact list? This is a keyboard app. It doesn't need it. This is where I love having prompt instead of deny. I want to know when these apps are trying to get my information. Let me tell you, I've caught them red-handed. While web browsing one day out of nowhere, LBE prompts me a notification that Swipe is trying to read my contact list. Here's a screenshot I took to show you guys. The next section is call logs. These 15 apps want to view my call logs. Chase Bank wants access to my call logs. Why do they need access to that? If you look, I would say almost all of these apps should be blocked. I mean, I could see Google Voice as an exception. Let me go ahead and allow it. The next section is position, in this case, GPS location. These 30 apps want to know where I am at. Now, most of these are legitimate, not angry birds, but for example, Flickster. If I want to find a movie close to me, it will need to use the GPS permission. Let me give you an example of, say, Yelp. If I load the Yelp app, LBE will immediately prompt me and ask me if I want to give Yelp permission to my location. I can also check mark remember my choice. So whenever I load Yelp again, it won't ask me. The reason Yelp needs my location is to allow me to search for my best restaurant from my current location. If I were to deny it, then it wouldn't be able to know my position and give me accurate results. Now let's go ahead and do that again, but let's deny it permission. When I do a search, I get an error message. Now this doesn't mean I can't put a city or an address and have Yelp find the nearest restaurant. This all depends how much information and privileges you want to give these companies. The next section is phone ID. I wouldn't worry too much about this. By default, these are all given permission but of course you can change it if you wish. If you notice, this next section is broken by a category called money. This area is where LBE protects your pocket. It blocks apps from accessing permissions that could cost you money. Let's take a look at send SMS. Five apps want permission to send SMS. Why would an app like Best Buy need to send SMS? Is it trying to spam my contacts with specials? I remember back in October of last year, Best Buy changed their permissions and as you can see from the reviews, people were not too happy. The next area is phone call. Eight of my apps want permission to make, answer, or hang up my calls. Although I have this as a prompt, I have never seen any of these apps try to do anything yet. But this is why I have it prompt me so I know when they're trying to pull something shady. 
The next area under money is phone state, which I have zero apps here. And last but not least, we have call monitoring. Four apps want the permission to monitor incoming and outgoing calls, including control of my volume. As you can see, by downloading apps, we are giving them access to lots of personal data when it's not necessary. The next tab on the bottom shows us all of the apps and how many permissions they are requesting. By clicking on the app, we can see and modify any permissions the app is requesting. Event log shows a history of things that have happened. For example, you can see what apps have been allowed to do things or what apps have been denied and also the time it happened. You can clear the event log, which is nice, and I like to do that so I can see my daily activity. The last tab on the bottom is settings for active protection services, which is pretty straightforward. Let's go back to the main menu. What is nice about this app is that it also has a firewall. Inside firewall, we have three sections at the bottom, the first being usage. This gives you a breakdown of all your internet usage on your cellular network and Wi-Fi. You can even monitor your bandwidth and set an alarm to go off should you exceed your data usage. There is a nice percentage bar on top giving you real-time stats. The next tab is permission and it's probably one of my favorite features of this app. Here you can disable any app from using your mobile network or Wi-Fi. Uh, let's say for example if I uncheck Facebook from 2G, 3G. What this does is it will not allow Facebook to use any of my cellular data. This is a nice feature to have for those on tiered plans and don't want apps using your data plan without you knowing. Sometimes apps randomly send information without you knowing and this can easily disable that. The same goes for Wi-Fi. I know what you're thinking, why should I disable an app from Wi-Fi? Well, I disabled internet access for Angry Birds and if you do that, you won't be getting those annoying ads which can also be used as an alternative ad blocker. Now for the last tab is the settings for traffic monitoring service. Different from the other settings tabs, um, here you can set your monthly data usage and also set an alarm, customize your data plan and all other settings. If we go back to the main screen, the last area is settings. These are the app settings that let you send error reports to the developers or also disable the top notification icon, which I do find it annoying. You can also jump into other settings again to the active protection service and traffic monitoring service settings too. One thing you will notice is that whenever you install a new app from the Play Store, you will get a notification asking you what type of permission you want to give this new app. Uh, this will ensure that your phone is always being protected. We, the user, need to take responsibility and do our part. It's not so much that these apps want to know everything about us and what we do. We need to ask ourselves, how secure are their data centers? Who has access to our data? I hope you guys like this video and I hope that this will make you more aware of what's out there so that we're not so careless in installing apps. Please share this with all of your friends and family. Let them know. Again, thanks again for subscribing and I'll see you in my next video.